Hello, welcome to Jan Oskowski Reads a Poem Season 4 Finale. Um, I'm very excited to be here. I'd like to just thank you all for coming out, watching all the episodes, because I know you all do. Um, if you missed a few, don't worry, you've got some time now to catch up. In the meantime, I'm going to read part two every, every time I hear square dance music. Um, if you haven't seen part one, shame on you. It's right there. Um, and if you need a refresher, it's about a girl who every time she walks forwards, she goes smaller. Every time she walks backwards, she grows bigger. And when she steps to the side, um, she hears square dance music. Everyone hears square dance music. Um, I'll just start kind of a little bit before where I left off. It all worked out pretty well until my sister was 15. By then she had a deaf boyfriend who didn't care about the music blasting every time she walked, and she was starting to wonder which other 15 year olds had to ride around in a little pouch every time they left town. Besides, the pouch was being worn out and her mom wasn't around to make a new one. She had been killed in a shark attack when I was 10 and my sister was 13. Only her pinky toe had washed up onto the shore. My sister and dad would fight every night. You shouldn't be out gallivanting with your deaf boyfriend all the time, he'd yell. You should be studying and thinking about your future. Stop trying to control me, she'd yell back. And then she'd slam out of the house. My sister would wake us all up when she got home at 3 or 4 a.m. The do -si do music as loud as ever and her dad would yell at her the next night for staying up so late and for waking me up when I had school in the morning. When my sister was at home, though, our dad would spend all his time in the shed and he didn't, so he didn't have to hear the square dancing music or remember he had two teenage daughters he was supposed to be raising all on his own. And then one night, we didn't hear swing your partner around and round, step to the side, step to the side. In the morning, my dad was sitting at the kitchen table with a spoon in his hand. He was running the spoon back and forth across his table. He'd done it so many times, there was a mark in the wood. When my sister did come home two days later with a black eye, my dad didn't yell. He sat at the kitchen table and my sister sat at the kitchen table and I made them both grilled cheese and none of, neither of them ate. Things like that happened a few more times over the next year and when my sister was 16, she moved out completely. She had a job as a cook at, a nursing, at the nursing home in town and the owners let her and her deaf boyfriend rent one of the empty rooms at a discounted rate. She'd quit school by then, and pretty soon after her and her deaf boyfriend moved in, her deaf boyfriend moved back out again. Then, it was just my sister and all these old people. I'd go visit her, and she'd be playing bridge in the games room or else watching The Price is Right. Our dad would never come see her. Five years later, I was getting ready to move for university. My sister barely left the nursing home by then. Most of the residents were too old to hear the square dancing music, and the ones that could hear it had such fat Alzheimer's they didn't realize it was the same song over and over. They'd grab her arm as she sidestepped past. What is that lovely music, they'd ask. I don't know, she'd say back. But it is nice, isn't it? Every few months, when my sister would talk about moving on. She didn't know anyone outside of town, though, and she hadn't even finished high school. It's almost my time, she'd say. She'd started talking slowly and loudly by then so that the old people could understand her. Time for what, I'd ask. And then, one day, a week before I moved away for school, it was her time. My sister hadn't been at her house since two Christmases before, but she'd stepped sideways through the front door like she still lived there. I think my dad and I both knew something was going on. I made dinner and we sat around talking about the good things we'd done together. We looked at pictures from our trip to the Grand Canyon and even laughed about how after we'd buried our mother's pinky toe, we'd gone to SeaWorld and poisoned all of the sharks as revenge. After dinner, my dad offered to drive my sister back to the nursing home, but neither of us were surprised when she said she wasn't going back. My sister hugged my dad and hugged me, and we stood at the edge of the lawn to watch her walk away. It took me a few seconds to realize there was no music. My sister wasn't walking sideways, she was walking forward. My dad had to grab me by the arm to stop me from reaching out to her. We watched as she got smaller and smaller until there was nothing left to see. The wind picked up, and maybe my sister was blown away with it. Or maybe she's still there, walking and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that was the end of the story and the end of this season. Thank you for watching. See you in September. Maybe.